Shalom. Good evening. This is your brother Wasil Bay coming at you with some more facts. This is not legal advice nor a sovereign citizen movement. This is just an intelligent movement versus the unintelligent. Let's get to this lecture. All right. I'm hitting you with uh, the state and federal administrative law. Open up some can of whoop ass, okay? That's what I'm going to do. See that? Constitution's right to a hearing. The Fifth Amendment, which applies to the federal government, provides that no corporation shall be deprived of life, liberty, property without due process of law. Your person is your property. That's that all caps. You know what I'm saying? Contains, or it can not be your all caps. It can be this, the, your regular name, your regular no man that you put with the capital. You know what I'm saying? Section 1 of the Fourth Amendment, which applies to state government, contains similar language. State constitution also provide for due process and may provide more but not less protection than the federal constitution. So, we finna get down to the meat and tech potatoes, people. You know what I'm saying? Look, y'all are going to welfare hearing, hearings. Excuse me. Before turning to the Goldberg decision, we supply some background about welfare. There are numerous federal, state, and local need-based welfare programs, including Supplemental Security, SSI, Medicaid, food stamps, general relief, rent supplements, aid for families with dependent children. That's what it used to be called. Now, the welfare program involved in Goldberg was fundamentally altered and renamed temporary assistance for needy families, which is TANF, in 1996. Under TANF, welfare is no longer an entitlement, people. You see that? And the states are permitted to design their own programs. TANF is heavily oriented toward getting welfare recipients into the workforce. These changes to welfare system may cast doubt on the Underlying theories, arguments set forth in the Goldberg. Y'all need to check that out. See, generally, Matthew Dealer, the Revolution and Welfare Administration Rules. Check this out. Established in 1935, the AFDC furnished federal money to the states. The states provided additional funds, set their own level of benefits, and administrated the program within the constraints of federal law in 1994. Y'all peep this shit out. Oh, I'm finna go hard. I ain't gonna give it to you. I ain't gonna give everything to you. You gonna have to do some work. Look, there were over 14 million recipients. Look at that. 2005. Check that out. In a single parent household, usually headed by females with one or more children. Check this out. Here comes the blackmail and the fraud. Because the enemy worked on the woman. Look at that. Look at that for various reasons. Such failure to meet the needs standing because of a change in resources. In addition, welfare can be terminated if a qualified pay rent does not cooperate in attaining support from an absent pay rent, which means blackmail, giving up, uh, snitching, giving up, uh, uh, ident stealing identity, all that, without somebody's implied, express 
verbal written consent. Violations or detect on the tandem recipients risk a loss of benefits if they fail to meet the work or community service requirements or require participation in drug rehab programs. Wow. Look at that. With welfare, the department's decision to terminate benefits. Check this shit out. Check this shit out. Oh, y'all want to get y'all laugh on? Huh? Let's do it. Now, listen to this. Listen to Spill the Beans. The only comment that I have is that, you know, currently 40 agencies are precluded from being involved in any type of visitation. You cannot use 40 funding for any kind of visitation, dispute resolution, or Hit anything it. else. So there may be some situations out there where states might like to have a little more flexibility to deal with the issue when they see that it may fact work to help uh, in, induce uh, child support enforcement. Plus there are also some other entities, and I certainly know at least in the case of Texas, where some other non-4D governmental entities like Friends of the Court and uh, the uh, Domestic Relations Office. You hear that? That's a conflict of interest. Too many, you know, and then those entities. That's not law. That ain't law. They're trying to do business. They're trying to force you to do business with them will in fact take on uh, visitation issues um, and uh, there might be ways that you could encourage a little bit more of that kind of activity outside of the 4D system. Uh, since you're, you were talking, Mr. Grubb, I'll, I'll turn to you for a minute. You mentioned in, in your testimony uh, uh, about uh, private uh, resources, you say. Look private, at that. Um, private. Uh, agencies who could assist in uh, this problem. Could you detail what you mean by that and, and what we could do uh, here in, in the, on the legislative front to Did it say judicial? What did he just say? Legislative. Facilitate uh, that, uh, that participation. I'd, I'd be happy to. There, there are currently some, some very interesting projects going on, are on around the country involving private, the private sector. When I say that, I'm talking private sector. Do you hear that? He finna spill his guts. Talking both in terms of uh, some private companies. Com Uh-oh. Private company. Private bar. Uh, and even at the private bar. Local level, some non-4D governmental entities. Non-4D government entities. Do you hear that? Like I said, friends of the court or, or domestic relations offices. I think they could all be involved to a greater, a much greater extent in helping solve the child support program. In, uh, in the chairman's uh, home state, Tennessee is actually out in the forefront of leading some of these privatization initiatives. In, in their 4D program has actually turned over the entire 4D program in some counties to private firms that have established uh, some pretty uh, amazing track records. Uh, in, in improving the performance of uh, establishment and enforcement of child support obligations. Um, there's a, a pilot project getting ready to begin in Dallas, Texas, a firm, uh, Maximus, that does a lot of government-type contracting work, is getting ready to be awarded a contract by the county, uh, by the... Contract. Were you in that contract? Did they sit down with you to discuss your offspring? People don't let these people handle you pimp you there's two people in this world hoes and pimps I'm not a hoe district judges family law judges in Dallas County to set up what I continue to insist is going to be the most fundamental way we can improve child support and that is beginning on a certain date all judges in Dallas County will will put every new child support order onto a system by which payment is monitored and at the, at the first delinquency, within 10 days, immediately instigate enforcement. Instigate enforcement. Of those efforts, it's not going to use uh, federal dollars, it's not going to use state dollars, and it's not going to use county dollars. It will be paid for by a $10 a month fee imposed on the non-custodial parent. Imposing. You can't impose, you can't force a, a, a contract on someone. You can't do that. And uh, this particular company is, is based... Particular company. Walmart, Kmart, come on now. ...going to take on the responsibility 
uh, for all of those new orders being issued in Dallas County. Uh, if that's successful, and if it proves... If it's successful? Did he say it was going to be successful? No. Y'all got to watch this shit, C-SPAN. Watch C-SPAN and see what these clowns are doing. Fraudsters. It's uh, somewhat marginally profitable, as it hopefully uh, it will. You could see that kind of thing repeated all over the country. There's no reason that couldn't occur in other places. And every one of those or those cases that you keep out of the 4D system means your existing 4D structure can do much more to serve the current backlog of cases that's out there. But, um, I, I appreciate your uh, your comments about what's going on and, and, and what can now happen. Now watch my, this. My question was, is there anything that we need to do legislatively to facilitate what you're what you're discussing, or or are these things going to be happening whether we do something or not, or are, are there things in current law that are barring participation from other other uh, sources to uh, to help this process? Along? I, I would suggest going back and, and looking at all the provisions of the 84, 88 and, and acts relating. To now that dumbass nigga talking about the old law and all that. Did you just see him go back to old law also? Bingo program and pending legislation, Senator Bradley's bill, the, the recommendations of the commission, and look to see if the 4D agency is the only one that should be allowed to use any of those types of tools that are identified in there. Um, what, what we did in, in Texas is very much along that line. We had reserved certain state enforcement tools only to the 4D agency. Uh, an example of that is our state law on administrative wage withholding. That had been reserved just for the 4D agency. Well, what we found now is we opened that up, and private attorneys are having a field day using that tool to go out and uh, and impose uh, the wage withholding orders on uh, delinquent obligors. Let me just make a request. Uh... Did you hear that? D stealing. Right? Stealing. Pushing other people up to do their dirty bidding. Wrongdoing bidding that if you've done that already uh, to the point of existing law, we would certainly appreciate any information that you have as to uh, uh, things that we could do here on the federal level too. Uh, I, I would be pleased to do that. Thank you. Uh, w just one additional question on uh, child support assurance. Uh, Mr. Jackson, you mentioned that the APWA was in favor of child support assurance. I don't think anyone else really testified one way or another about that. Does anybody have any comments about that? The American Bar Association not take a specific position on child assurance. However, to the extent that the U.S. Commission um, generally did not favor a federal child support assurance program at this time, we would concur. We don't believe that that would be the appropriate way to go at this time. And, and I think to clarify, uh, Mr. Santorum, Mr. Chairman, uh, the American Public Welfare Association has indicated we favor demonstrations uh, in this area to find out. Well, you heard enough. And they was talking about to bankruptcy does not eliminate child support. Now listen, listen to this clown. He in Indiana. Listen to this clown. Listen to this clown real good. This is what attorneys do. They they're actors. They play on your emotions and your feelings. That's why they have motions in the courtroom. Motions, and you put an E in front of that motion. You got your E motion, right? There you go. Listen. My grandfather came to this country from Europe. You heard that? For most of his life, he ran a corner grocery store near Notre Dame. He taught me that all people deserve respect. He said all people deserve, deserve respect. Listen. I'm Robert Rosenfeld. Now, I'm an attorney who helps good people win Social Security disability. You deserve respect. At my law firm, you're not a case. You're a person. <laughs> He said you're not a case, you're a person, and we know what person mean under the IRS tax code, right? Right, check this out. This on, check this out. Today is attorney Jim Monroe. He's a bankruptcy attorney right here in Orlando, and we've been talking about bankruptcy and things that it can discharge and not discharge. Well, here's a, probably an easy one for you, Jim, and that is this. 
you have a client that comes to you, that client owes a lot of back child support or back alimony, can they wipe out uh, back child support or alimony through bankruptcy? Absolutely not. Neither <laughs> one of them. No, 523A5, A uh, you are prohibited under the bankruptcy code from getting uh, away with discharging a support obligation. No way. Okay, well, you know, there's a new alimony law that I just read in the paper this morning. looks like it's going to end up on the governor's desk, but I didn't read anything about it being able to be discharging alimony through bankruptcy. No, no, that's a state law, but the bankruptcy court would interpret. The bankruptcy court looks at the underlying state law to make a determination of whether or not it is a support obligation under 523A5. And if it is, it's non-dischargeable. End of story. And what about in a Chapter 13? Could it be um, like any other creditor paid over a period of five years? Uh, you might be able to pay that over a period of five years, yes. Um, but you uh, need to be aware that the automatic stay doesn't apply to enforcement of child support these days because of the changes in the law in 2005. So your ex-spouse may be taking you back uh, to court. Hey, you didn't hear that from me. Shit. Now, this is a guy who Christopher Smith fucked over. You know what I'm saying? Read these comments. Hold on. Has he contacted you yet? Nope. His name is Gregory Taylor. People look it up. He screwed over another dude. I would like to apologize for the premature comment I left a couple months ago. Chris screwed me, bro. Took my money and left me hanging. Really sorry to hear that. Look at that. Look at that shit. Niggas a clown, man. Y'all need to do y'all homework. Well, I'm finna give y'all some comedy. I'm finna show you who you are, okay? That's Christopher Smith and the child support people right here. And this is you, right? And just listen to me. You can listen to me in the background. You can listen to Amen and all the brothers who beat child support. My boys in Indiana, my my main man, you know, not rude, you know what I'm saying? He gonna be in the background talking to you too. He been trying to tell y'all niggas for so long. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't understand this movie, you'll never understand or overstand the bullshit that's going on with you. Now check this out. That's us right here. That's me right there, look. Get it off your motherfucking lazy ass and read the book, and you will be become a master, not a bitch. You know what I'm saying? This is what happened when you read right here, see? And then, <laughs> look. Yo, shit ain't working now, Christopher Smith. Look at Chris. <laughs> Look at that. You got that knowledge finna go. Look at that. That's that knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Look, that's that bankruptcy. Look at them attorneys. That was a lawyer back there. Look at Chris. His power was gone. You got hold of some books and some powerful paperwork. Oh, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, like I say, hit me up. Y'all need some uh, some help doing your paperwork or whatever. You know what I'm saying? If not, tell me your victory, man. I want to hear more men because I'm going to tell you something. Alpha males don't always say that they alpha. They show it. If you're a man, show it. Don't, don't talk about it. Be about it. You know what I'm saying? 
And you ain't a real man if you gotta let somebody else tell you how much you gotta pay for your own offspring, you know what I'm saying? I'd be damned if I let a hoe and a nigga pimp me. Hit me up, hotel.